when I first um, became an attending in the mid 80s um, and my focus was on neurotrauma as a neurosurgeon and um, I went around the country giving lectures and I noticed there was a lot of variability in care of people who are in coma after, after a severe traumatic brain injury and a, a lot of my other colleagues noted the same things. Um, Randy Chestnut who's now in, in Seattle uh, was one of them and we, we got together and, and said why don't, we, why don't we get together people and, and see what the evidence is? Because it seems to me that we should be doing these kinds of things for people who have severe traumatic brain injury to get the best results. And it seems that there's a lot of variability uh, when you go from trauma center to trauma center about how these patients are getting cared for. And uh, we came up with, and we got together a group of expert neurosurgeons. We worked with the American Association of Neurological Surgeons and, um, and the Congress of Neurosurgeons and the World Health Organization and a number of other groups that say, why don't we look at the, the evidence and come up with recommendations for best diagnosis and treatments? And we came up with the first guidelines, actually it was in any branch of surgery when they first came out. A lot of other surgery uh, societies use that template to do evidence-based guidelines. And they're published in uh, 1995. And they were the first evidence-based guidelines endorsed by the American Association of Neurological Surgeons. And uh, we thought we're done. We thought we, you know, we published them. Uh, we, uh, all, the, all the people that worked on it, the medical societies thought, okay, it's published, it's out there, people know what to do. Actually, this was started by a survey that the Brain Trauma Foundation did earlier on showing that only, at best, one-third of trauma centers were giving the best care to these patients based upon current evidence. Things like brain pressure monitoring, uh, making sure that, that, well, you have to start with brain pressure monitoring, and then there's a lot of things that flow out of that. Uh, giving steroids to patients, a lot of people were still giving steroids at that point. Um, we knew a lot of things where there evidence where it either didn't work or was harmful to patients, hyperventilation. So, um, so we published it in 95, we thought we're done. We did another survey and it hardly had budged it at all, at all. People hadn't really changed their behavior. And we realized we really need to implement. We need to get the word out, change behavior. Um, at that time, I took care of uh, the lady in Central Park that was beaten up, and um, uh, Malcolm Gladwell did an article in The New Yorker about it and talked about uh, creating an, uh, an even playing field for people who have traumatic brain injury. We should have these guidelines in, in every trauma center. It doesn't matter who you are. You should get the best care. And um, uh, George Soros read the article and called me up and said, why don't you go to Eastern Europe and, and train the neurosurgeons that are coming out of communism there, and, and we want to teach them about open, transparent medicine, evidence-based medicine. So we went there, and I took my colleagues with me, and we uh, were in 45 hospitals in eight countries <laughs> over five years. And we actually, uh, what uh, uh, Soros did was actually pay for a database that we could track trauma patients and look at improvements in outcome. It turned out we put these um, evidence-based guidelines in practice, the mortality dropped by 50 percent. So we came back, the New York State endorsed the guidelines, we, we, we got a program with the Department of Health in New York State, we had the trauma centers in New York State participate, and they've been in there for the last 10 years, and guess what, the mortality in New York State has dropped by 50 percent, and that's after correcting for age, Glasgow coma scale, you know, injury severity, and so on. So there's been a real drop of 50 percent because the guidelines were put into place. Now the major part of it is uh, brain pressure monitoring went up dramatically and the lack of using steroids and so on. Putting all that into place dropped the mortality. In fact, the CDC came out with a paper in 2007 saying if the Brain Trauma Foundation guidelines were put in every trauma center, we'd see a 50 percent, that number keeps on coming up, 50 percent drop in mortality. It would save the country $3.8 billion a year because people would come out of the trauma centers in better shape go back maybe to work, be independent, those kinds of things save a lot of money. 